Welcome to Menu Monday. New recipes every Monday. Stuck in that cooking rut? I've been there. Come join me and try some new things. I have fun in the kitchen and I hope you enjoy the video. So let's get cooking. This week's Menu Monday is going to be all desserts. So I'm starting today with a no-bake cookie. So let's get going. First thing we're going to do is put in the butter, the sugar, cocoa, and milk in the saucepan over medium heat to get that all combined. You can do this in a glass bowl on your instant pot set to saute, but I prefer to do it on the stove top. And then we're going to stir that and bring that to a boil. Don't walk away from this, you want to stay and stir it constantly. Once it's heated and to boiling, you're going to remove from the heat, add the salt, vanilla, peanut butter, and then you're going to mix all that until it's combined. It's actually the first time I've made this dessert. I'm not a, I'm not big on making desserts. I love making cakes, but I thought I'd try some new things and this was super easy. And I still have enough ingredients to make it probably three, possibly four more times out of what I purchased. So very simple. I think next time I might use the smaller scoop and make them slightly smaller. All right, so once we start in the peanut butter, we're gonna go ahead and add the oats and get those incorporated. And then all we do is take a cookie sheet and put some foil, or you can use wax paper, and then um, plop them on there. And then you just let them cool, and then they're ready to eat. All right, so this is my middle size scoop, and they were very, very good, but they're, very, they're also quite rich. I think if I make them smaller next time, they'll probably be, um, you know, it's less of a mouthful, put it that way. So I'm going to give it a try, but these were good. And if you don't have like a scoop like that, you can use a spoon too. So. Very forgiving. every last bit right <laughs> all right and there they are and here are your ingredients and of course on the website I will have the directions and the website is rvlifeintheusa.com today we're making instant pot mini cheesecake bites as I just purchased the uh, little trays so we're going to mix in a bowl the graham cracker crumbs. I just bought the loose ones. You can also get regular graham crackers and crush them. We're going to add some melted butter, some brown sugar, and salt. Okay, we're going to mix this up until it's all 
combined and then we're going to put them in the um, egg bite molds. That was what I was trying to say. Yeah, Silicone egg bite molds is what I purchased and I purchased the ones that had the lid that could go in the instant pot but I decided for this since I had not used it before to go ahead and use the paper towel and foil as suggested in the recipe. So I just did one tablespoon, put a tablespoon in each and then flattened them with the spoon and that seemed to work quite well. Okay, and once we've got this all broken down and, and pressed down rather, not broken down, but pressed down, we're going to put this in the mold in the freezer for 10 minutes so that these crusts can set. And while that's doing that, we're going to beat together cream cheese, heavy cream, the sugar, egg, cornstarch, vanilla extract and almond extract and we're going to mix that well until it's slightly fluffy. Now I was going to get out my blender but I have this bullet and I thought it would fit in here. Uh, it was a tight squeeze but it made it and it turned out really good so whatever you want to use. And I also have an immersion blender and I could have done this in like a cup or something and used that so there's many ways uh, to get this mixed up. Alright, so that's done and I've taken out the um, egg bite mold from the freezer. It's been there 10 minutes and we're just going to put in the um, mixture on top of the graham cracker crumbs. And it was honestly the perfect amount for one tray of these bites. I did purchase two egg bite trays, um, but you would have to double the recipe to make two of these. Okay, and then it says to shake this mold a little bit or bang it on the counter so that the air comes out and the filling um, gets onto the crust. So we're going to do that. And you put your paper towel on and then your foil. And this helps catch excess moisture from the steam inside the pot. I don't know that, that's what I'm reading on the recipe. <laughs> so then in the instant pot we're going to put let's see, a cup of water. And we're going to get the trivet after we've put the water in there, place it inside the pot. Set this to cook time eight minutes. It's going to take about seven minutes for the pot to come to pressure. After it's done, you're going to let it do a natural release for 10 minutes and then release the remaining pressure. You're going to open the lid, carefully remove the mold, and then let it rest on the counter. And then put it in the refrigerator, 30 minutes on the counter, and then transfer it to the fridge so that it cools for four hours. Once that's done, you can then remove the cheesecake bites from the egg bite mold. You just run a butter knife around it and then get a little spatula, but I just pop mine out. Um, and then we served ours with the cherries on top and it was very, very good.
this is my first time using this tray but I can see that it's going to get easier as I work with it. I haven't tried the eggs in it yet, though I certainly will. And there they are. And here are your ingredients. Good morning everybody. Today's dessert is going to be an English trifle. Now this is the only bowl I could find. Generally a trifle bowl is as big on the bottom as it is on top. In other words, the sides are straight. It doesn't come down like a mixing bowl. But this is all I've got. I had a trifle bowl. I can't find it. Sorry for the traffic. I've got the windows and doors open. It's finally cooling off down here. Um, so we're going to go with this. Let's get started. So first it's the slice of the strawberries. I'm going to do all the fruit first. Um, the only thing I had to do with the blackberries is wash them. They don't require slicing, but we do have to slice up the strawberries and also the bananas and the cake. So strawberries first. Alright, now we've got them all cut up, we're going to sprinkle them with sugar. The recipe called for a quarter cup white sugar. I thought this was a lot of sugar for the amount of strawberries that I had. And I may next time not use quite as much, but it didn't make any difference to the taste of the trifle. It was delicious. So we've got the strawberries down, we're going to let them sit. Next we're going to cut up the bananas. Unfortunately, my bananas have been sitting for a while, so they weren't as fresh as I would have liked, so I had to cut out some of the little brown parts. But again, didn't make a difference to the trifle. It was still delicious. I think you can use whatever you wish to use in this. I mean, this is the traditional way to do it. Now this banana, I'm just picking the pieces that are good and throwing the other ones away in that second uh, bowl behind it. Now these you want to soak in orange juice. And again that's a quarter cup. And just give them a toss. Now we're moving along to the pound cake and you want to cut that into cubes. You can use any pound cake you want. We couldn't find an actual cake, so I just used these slices, and I really I only needed half of them. And once you get them cubed up, you get you some sherry. And you're going to sprinkle the sherry on the cake. Mix that up. You want to make sure that all the cubes get a little sherry soaked in. Now we're going to make the pudding and that is the uh, vanilla. And use the instant pudding mix and you're going to mix that with the milk. Thank you. 
speeding this up. I think I mixed that for about two minutes. All right, now we're going to make the trifle. So the first thing you do is put a layer of cake in the bottom. Top with a layer of strawberries. You're going to use half the cake, half the strawberries, half the bananas, half the blueberries, and half of the pudding. And now we're going to repeat those steps in the same order. So now to finish up the trifle, I'm going to whisk up the um, heavy whipping cream and you're going to do that. You whip that until you get some peaks and then you spread that on top of the trifle and garnish with the cherries. Then you want to put it in the refrigerator so that the whipping cream gets firmer and it'll be ready to serve in a couple of hours. And there she is, and here are your ingredients. All right, today, brownie molten pie. This one was the easiest, I believe. All you do is take the cake mix and make it as directed on the box.
Now we're going to take the Oreo pie crust and we're going to remove the plastic and we're going to put the mixture in the crust. Now we're going to drop in some Nutella, I think it was six teaspoons, and that's to make it so that it's really runny when you cut into this pie. And after you put the Nutella in, you're going to stir this with a fork to, you know, incorporate it with the brownie mix. Now this cooks in the oven at 285 degrees for 20 minutes and I thought to myself, well, that's barely going to cook it, but in researching um, molten pie, it is supposed to be liquidy in the center, so that's why you don't cook it as long as it says on the box to make brownies, because obviously brownies are harder. So this turned out perfectly and it was really, really delicious. Big Daddy enjoyed licking the bowl after I was done here. And also we enjoyed our uh, dessert. That was what the cake looked like when it came out. And here's our bowl served up with some cream. Another delicious dessert. Well, thank you for joining me again for another Menu Monday. I will be back next Monday with more recipes. For anyone that's new, thank you for joining me today, and please consider subscribing. Uh, my husband and I travel around the country. My husband is an industrial pipe fitter, and we go job to job. So some of our videos are exploring the U.S. when we get to an area, but I do do uh, food videos every Monday. So thanks again for everybody coming back. Good to see you, and I will see everybody next Monday. Love y'all. Bye-bye.